Welcome to the Marvels, Mysteries and Midlanders podcast. Prepare to take a dive into all things mythical, eerie and downright strange. Stick around, you might just enjoy yourself. <laughs> how you guys oh. doing how's things yeah a little bit a little bit tired <laughs> yeah how, how, how was your uh your bit your big weekend yeah because you you two been both busy let's hear about it tell me about your lives uh tell me about your lives well I in, one. <laughs> in wales this yesterday was the first night that uh clubs opened <laughs> so everyone out was out on a lash <laughs> fucking each other and <laughs> fucking each other up but not you but not uh, me uh, 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 uh. What about you, Lewis? What have you been doing? Yeah, Lewis. Uh, I had a leave in do. Hey, did Lewis Carter become mental? Lewis, Lewis father. <laughs> Lewis fa- <coughs> did, did Lewis father come to the party? Yeah, there was a leave in do of, of Lewis's sperm. <laughs> <laughs> Exit in his sack. There's protein everywhere. Yeah, um, that's good. So you both had quite like a party and kind of a, you know. Fine vibe, yeah. 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 Yeah, yeah. I um. Watched. My voice is a little raspy. It's okay. Well, add to the effect of the episode. Okay. It's fine. <laughs> so I really like this idea. The story is positively haunting in every way. That's what you got to sound like for the rest oh, of the episode. It's so cold. It's so cold. <laughs> they think it's all over. It is now. <laughs> um, I spent my weekend. I did a fair bit of crying this week. <laughs> Oh, how come? <laughs> I watched a film called The Electrical Life of Louis Wayne. Um, it's about the artist Louis Wayne. He, he did these um, like paintings of cats in like, the Victorian period. And the film, mate, it just... I watched it thinking, oh, it's just about this kooky guy who paints cats. You know, oh, it'll be, it'll be fun. Because the, the guy who uh, did Flowers did it, Adam. Oh, really? Yeah, the guy who directed Flowers did it. So, I, you know, I've been following his career with great interest. And, um, <laughs> yeah, I watched it and... I was like, okay, st- one bit made me cry. I was like, yeah, it's fine. And I cried again and again. I just, I just, cry- I haven't cried that much to a film ever. James, you know, men don't cry. That you're not allowed. Welcome to Marvel's Mysteries and Midlanders, everybody. <laughs> On this podcast, we promote crying. Adam is a a sadomasochistic. No, that's the wrong word. He's a chauvinistic pig. There we go. That's correct. And he oh, is, dude. frankly, disgraceful. I promote crying as a man. As a man. I promote crying because you shouldn't bolt your emotions, Adam, or you end up emotionally scuffed like you. Nah, you know? I feel like I'm emotionally superior. <laughs> <laughs> I don't cry because I'm actually dead inside. <laughs> I don't yeah. cry because I don't want to cry. So fuck you all. <laughs> <laughs> Lewis, how about you? How about you for crying? You, you big crier, big time crier. Yeah, when you need to, you need to, don't you? There you go. The man, the man said it. The man very said mature, it. The uh, man said it, mate. <laughs> So, you know, well, I'm sorry that me crying is so embarrassing to you, Adam, but deal with it. But yeah, watch, pig. <laughs> watch The Electrical Life of Louis Wayne. It's got an incredible soundtrack that brings this boy to tears. So welcome to Marvel's Mysteries and Midlanders. I am James. The man who has no emotion is Adam Daly. And the other soft voice gentleman who is nursing a potential hangover, I didn't ask, is Lewis Carter. Oh, Benedict hello, hello. Cumberbatch is in it. Yeah, Benedict, Benedictus Cumberbatch is in it. Claire Foy is in it. Uh, pretty much all of the flowers actors are in it, Ooh, so you know you, you okay. want to watch it. You Looks watch like it. I maybe we'll watch this. Sunday. Amazon and uh, cinemas sponsor us because uh, Louis Wayne, uh, electrical <laughs> life of Louis Wayne, is worth watching. So, gents, this week I'm completely sober. Won't embarrass myself, not in the the alcoholic sense anyway. You know, but today we're covering a true crime story, or are we? Yeah, we are. Because you guys, I know you like the real stuff. You like the real stuff, don't you? You like the yeah. real stuff. Real yeah. stuff. Not real all this stuff. fucking... Yeah, yeah. All this fake fairy what stuff. Is stuff. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But it's a, it's a ye olde true crime story. A ye olde. But the reason why we're covering it is because my intrepid co-hosts like the real stuff. And I, I know, I have to, I have to admit, I, I, I do like it as well. 
But I'm sure a lot of you listeners enjoy the, the real stuff as well, so let's get into it. Today we have a story to tell, which has become part of the vast world of British hauntings. Now, I know you're saying, you know, hauntings aren't real. Adam, that's going for your head. It's a true story. How can be ghost related to it? I didn't say it? that. Yeah, I, I said it. I seen that. it on your face, Adam. I'm just I've more seen than that. likely to that's, believe that they're not true. That's a smug all. sense of entitlement. You slanderous Every scum. week. Slander. His story is slander, but yeah, this uh, it's, this story is part of the, the British haunting scene, but also covers a series of horrifying crimes allegedly committed in the same place. But how much of it is real? Well, gorgeous listeners, take a seat on a wooden chair, a chaise lounge, or even a beanbag if that's how you choose to live your life. Pour yourself a nice hot glass of uh, coffee, tea, or even bovril. And join us as we delve into the Ostrich Inn Murders. That's the theme for it. What does an ostrich sound like? (laughs) Perfect. (laughs) (laughs) Absolutely perfect. (laughs) Look at that little smile on his face as well. Yeah. I don't know what an ostrich sounds like, but it's not like that. If I made an ostrich, it doesn't make that noise. I'm going to be disappointed. So are you guys familiar with inns? Spend much time in inns? Uh, Been to many uh, inns? No. I, I spend some time in inns on games. Good. That's all I know Good. of inns. Good. Bard, play me a tune. <laughs> <laughs> but, but you, Mr. Carter? Yeah, just a pub with rooms. <laughs> I mean, yeah, I, I guess. Wait, what were you eating, Lewis? Are you in like some sort of like root or something? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Cable, time. Okay. cable time. Oh, okay, cable time. Why are you chewing? Was it a good night know. last night, Lewis? <laughs> 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 Don't do the gurning face. It just disturbs me. <laughs> but yeah, the last inn I stayed in was the, it was the King's Arms in Didmart in the Cotswolds. I, whenever I stop in an old place, I'll message my dad and be like, Yo, Dad, what's the down low on this place? Is it haunted or what? ka it's your son. Is there any ghosts? And it turns out it was haunted. But the funny thing is, Hannah said to me, I think this place is haunted. I think there's something in the room with us. And I was like, don't worry about it, babe. It's not haunted. You're just being crazy. But I actually knew the entire time it was haunted. I just didn't tell her because I knew she'd freak out. <laughs> soon as we drove out, <laughs> soon as we, soon as we drove out the car park, I was like, by the way, it was haunted. <laughs> so, yeah. Little, that's, that's my inn story. But that's about it, really, in terms of inns. You know, Adam's a digital inn visitor. I'm a one-time inn visitor. Lewis... Well, we don't know. He's, he's so mysterious. It's a mystery. Yeah, it doesn't I don't say. know if I have visited him. All right. We'll leave it at that. So, history time. The Ostrich Inn is, as of this episode's release, 916 years old, being opened in 1106 and making it the fourth oldest pub in the UK. Being beaten out by the Old Ferry Boat Inn in St. Ives, Cambridgeshire, which opened in 560 AD. Listen... We Brits, mate, we've been partying for a long time, mate. We love an old pub. We've been partying for a long time, mate. You know what I'm saying. But anyway, to give you a further insight into the pub's opening year, this was the year when Henry I was on the throne. That's a, that's a whole seven Henrys and other monarchs before the <coughs> whole wife and male heir obsessed one came along. The Ostrich Inn itself is located in Colnbrook, near Slough, Berkshire and was once known as the Hospice, but over time gained itself a new name. I mean, I wouldn't want to go drinking in a place called the Hospice. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> just, 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 just. I actually, yeah, I would. I would. What, for the irony? Yes. Would it be for the irony, yeah? I <laughs> love me a little bit of irony. Oh, Absolutely. fuck you, I need Hospice, man. I'm fucked. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna do it. No, <laughs> just said it, mate. He just said it. He uh, said it, guys. Uh, Judge him. It's just a joke, everyone. <laughs> <laughs> it's just a joke, guys. But how would you work that into conversation as well? Do you want to go for a drink at the? Uh, I can never be sure. I think we'd have to do with you oh, and just not say anything. Excuse me. I have to do with no. you and just not say anything, just like your uh, your wife situation. Like yeah, I don't tell my wife anything. I'm one of no. those husbands. You I don't. don't I don't. You tell don't wife need to either. know. Don't. What was that? Sorry. Oh, sorry. There was nothing, James. Don't no, you, uh, please, please repeat that. Please repeat <laughs> what you just said. <laughs> I said I don't say anything to your wife either. I know there's much you'd like to say to my wife, Adam, oh. because you've told me instead of her. <laughs> you sicko! I pretend but... that you are her sometimes. <laughs> a picture me on the wall with a red wig on. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Just like some <laughs> Jessica Rabbit hair. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Your face on it. <laughs> oh, how I miss her, him, her. Perfection. Him. Perfect. <laughs> I've never seen such a perfect. 
<laughs> that's good, that's good. Other historical facts about the ostrich include Dick Turpin, the notorious bad boy highwayman. <laughs> What's his name? <laughs> Dick, Dick Turpin. Oh, okay. I thought, for some reason, my... Not, my... Not Dick Turnip. <laughs> yeah, I thought it was Dick Turnip. <laughs> <laughs> it just entered my mind. I was like, I know you didn't say Turnip. But I heard that, 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 my friend, is unfortunate. <laughs> that is a very turnipy dick you've it's got a, there. <laughs> it's a growth! <laughs> oh! <laughs> very tumorous. <laughs> Your dick is tumorous, mate. Jesus Christ. <laughs> you will not get that looked at. <laughs> it's not a tumor. It's not a tumor. <laughs> <laughs> um. Yes, uh, Dick Turpin, notorious bad boy highwayman, used the inn as a hideout, escaping the Bow Street Runners, which sounds like a band like Dex's Midnight Runners or something. Oh, yeah. Come on, hey! Come on! It's you, hey! Come on! Yeah, come so on, the, England! Go, come on! <laughs> so the Bow Street Runners were London's actual first police force. Before they were called the police, they were called the Bow Street Runners. And he escaped them by jumping out of a window, and King John was also rumoured to have stopped at the inn on the way to Runnymede to sign the Magna Carta. Mm. History. History, everyone. But this isn't a historical podcast, so if you've got an issue with my historical facts, I don't care, okay? I'm here <laughs> for the weirdness, the violence, the bloodshed, the, f- the nothingness, okay? That's why I'm here. Anyway, sorry, gents. Let's, let's, let's keep going. So, let's talk about these ostrich inn murders. So, fast forward to the 17th century, roughly... The 1630s, the decade where Boston was founded and the German Würzburg witch trials came to an end, claiming the lives of 900 people, which is a story for another day, of course. We'll get back to that, though. Roughly, a little later. The Ostrich Inn was under new ownership and it was time for a murder most foul. Or murderers. So, gents, any questions? Adam, you look so depressed. So I was uh, in a a trance. Mm Mm-hmm. (laughs) Why are you looking at me? I like to engage with my audience. I like to stare into your eyes. Any questions so far, gentlemen? No. Nah. It was about 400 years ago, though. Yeah, uh, 1632, mate. This is Lewis, what, what do you have by your mouth now? He's got a bolt by his mouth. What Why is he... with you and no, random it's, it's apparatus it's an around you? Yeah. It's an orgs adapter. Yeah. It is? <laughs> One thinks what I'll have in his mouth next. Am I right, guys? Find out Any, next week. Anyway. <laughs> Find out next week on Marvel's Mystery Fiddlers what Lewis will put yeah. in his mouth. Yes, sir. <laughs> What's <laughs> that? I thought it was a twig. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> Jeez. I can't handle this. I can't. I can't, can't do it. So, introducing Mr. John Jarman and his wife, Mrs. Jarman, Buckinghamshire's first <laughs> alleged serial killers, apparently. Now, I can't give you a true description <laughs> of what these guys sounded or looked like, but in my mind, in my mind and your minds, what do you imagine a Mr. and Mrs. Jarman who own a inn look like? What's your personal interpretation? I'll tell you mine after you've told me yours. I imagine them to be one of them is quite large. Sorry, my uh, flatmate who's Italian is shouting at someone at the moment in Italian. Is he it's, okay? Uh, <laughs> oh no, she's a. Uh, I think she's uh, on the phone. Um, it's making it very difficult to concentrate. <laughs> I want to listen. <laughs> Please, we don't uh, culturally appropriate here. So, yes. yes. Um, I imagine to be quite a stocky fellow, Mr. Jarman. I did have that same image. I said he was, you know, a but portly, I imagine I imagine Mrs. Chap. Mrs. Jarman to be fl- fairly slimmer, Slim, slimmer see. than Mr. Jarman. Right. No, you see, I was thinking of like a tall. Ish skinny Blake. It's imagining himself, oh, no, listeners. Like a, Ma- you know. Imagining himself, listeners, in the no. role of the serial killer. Yes, I like an older, time. older, like <laughs> I imagine uh, seventy year olds. Uh, seventy year olds, I would imagine him as, which is probably not realistic four hundred years ago. But seven? Did you say seven, seventy year old? <laughs> yeah. No, I'd say they're the more middle aged. I think they okay, were. Yes. I, th- I think that's again. There's no age for them in this. To be fair, yeah. it's just um, that's what I go for as well. One I... tall, skinny guy, and one short, chubby girl. Ah, so you've kind of got an opposite of what Adam said. Yeah. Mm. See, I said they were both quite a portly couple, well fed, one might say, fat with muscle. So you know that that kind of stocky, you know, could take you in a fight easily. You know, they weren't. Adam, are you still being harassed by Italian? I'm still trying to listen, yes. Why are you listening to someone else? It's quite fascinating to listen to. More it, fascinating yeah. than me telling a story about... <laughs> I'll, I'll be honest. Ye olde serial killers? It's on par. It's on par, okay. 
That's bullshit. I it's, feel it's it's it, it's almost like a mm -hmm. a sonnet listening to uh, an Italian lady <laughs> argue and shout in Italian. One more cornetto. <laughs> Please shout at me. <laughs> 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 I can't think of any uh, Italian insults. Uh, 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 da Vinci Caravaggio. <laughs> I don't know. I've lost it. But yeah, so this couple, the Germans, may have truly been in love with one another. We don't know them well enough. But they both began a new relationship, a relationship with greed, specifically a love for money. I like money. I like money too. I like money. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that was good. <laughs> Thank you. Mr. Krabs there, yeah. <laughs> so, uh, this scheming couple did their research and opened up an inn on the main road to Windsor and also from London to Bath at the time, which was the Ostrich Inn. This was mainly for the amount of footfall along this road, and travellers from far and wide would always need accommodation whilst heading to and fro for royal duties and other things. The Ostrich Inn became a popular spot for boozing, perusing, and probably floozing too. Maybe not. It just sounded cool because it rhymed. That's why I wrote that. But either way, enjoy it. Either way, the Germans were loving the stacks of cash they were making, but unfortunately, the thing is with greed, it's never, ever quite enough. So what's the best lucrative sideline to pulling pints, would you say? If you were running an inn. Pulling pints. You know, uh, food wild. Leasing rooms. Next to running an inn. <laughs> oh. <laughs> 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 yeah, obviously. <laughs> you gotta do the washing up, ain't you? Side uh, okay, sideline career outside of running an inn in every single role possible to do in an inn. I want washing up or <laughs> cleaning room. <laughs> think think bigger. <laughs> They didn't have vacuums in 1632. Well, the equivalent of that. They get the Dyson out. Sucking the floor so get, with your mouth. Get the Henry out. <laughs> Sucking the floor with your mouth, mate. Back then, Henry was just some poor kid who had to pick him up by his legs, push him about, and suck the floor for you. <gasps> Please, I can't do it anymore. Stay rigid, Henry. <laughs> <laughs> Too much saliva, Henry. Try mouth. I told you to drink before we started this. Yeah. Uh, no. Okay. Horse grooming. Horse uh, <laughs> breeding. <laughs> Something with horses. There's a distinct lack of imagination in this chat. Carriage today, repairs. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, anything a little more, you know? Whatever weird? the. Um, anything weirder out there you want to maybe. Whatever choose? the 17th century equivalent of selling Avon door to door is. <laughs> <laughs> It'd just be turned up at someone's doorstep with like a, a mysterious seeds. bottle of seeds. These all, uh, yeah, they're nice, mate. Uh, Do you know bye. Avon is Nova backwards? Wow. <laughs> Do you think that's intentional? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, we've uh, we've segwayed. Let, let's continue. <laughs> I'm not sure what you want me to say, Adam. <laughs> <laughs> it was just, I was like, fuck it up. Do you mean Nova the superhero from Guardians of the Galaxy? No, I don't. I mean oh, right. the fucking, like, real Nova in real time where the grown-ups live. Where's that? <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. But, yeah, um, if you're thinking more like uh, less desirable sideline activities, they could have got some kind of pickpocketing ring going. You know, Lewis obviously came in with his carriage repair, horse grooming, sitch. Uh, Adam Avon representative, you know, something like that. And maybe they employed some ladies of the night or some sort of gambling den. You know, there are ways to make money. A little bit of dodgy money on the side back in the day. I mean, this still may be the case, but it probably is a bit risky having that kind of operation happening on the Royal Trail. You know, like pickpocketing and... Are you listening to that Italian no, I'm, again? I'm trying. I'm listening to see if it's over. And I think it is over. Why don't you just keep your headphones on and then you won't know? You can just get I on can with I can still hear it through the headphones. You get some noise cancelling headphones, you burk. <laughs> think I have the money for that? <laughs> yes! So, the Jarmans settled for the next best thing in terms of sideline careers. Murderers! <laughs> See, the, the Jarmans <laughs> knew that a lot of their patrons were wealthy, flushed with cash, rolling in Wonga! This Fucking Wonga. Wonga, mate. Uh, during this time period, travelling and being wealthy was also taking your life into your own hands. So instead of poisoning or maybe giving a quick shank to the rich folk, they decided they've got to spend money to make money. What do you think their big idea for murdering was? Well, it's got to be something to do with the uh, carriage repairs. 
<laughs> so I'd say Lewis's sinister Carter's Lewis carriage can repairs. Steal the carriage. Yeah. And the stealing is... carriages, and then charging is, people. Is that how they kill them? To repair them. I mean, remember, I've just said that they're murderers. So I'm asking you more. How do you think they go about murdering people? Oh, With the I carriages, thought you, I, I, the motives. motives. I thought you were on about the motives. Yeah. I was oh, no, no, we know the motive. The motive is greed. They wanted money. Well, greed. Tight, and they started killing people for their money. But why? How should I say? Do you think they were doing it before we get into how they did it? Oh, um, um, poison. Yeah, okay. poison. Okay, you're going for poison. Oh wait, Agent. I'll choose something else. Um, yeah, be a bit imaginative, because strangling in the night. <laughs> Mr. Jarman uses his burly weight like, to like overpower Bur- them. Like Burke and Hare. Yeah. They, they burked him. They remember, burked him. remember me, Missy? I've been looking after you for a long time. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what you're talking about, Meat. I don't know what you're just talking stiff. about, Meat. Good old Burke and Hare. Ah, oh, those were the days back when I was happy. Anyway, guys, <laughs> let's keep going. Uh, so, what they did was, at this time, I'm not going to tell you just yet, but they spent money on this big murderous plan. And there was probably a very impressive building montage in the inn at the same time. During this period, one of the nicest rooms in the inn was shut down and would become known as the Blue Room. It was shut down for renovation purposes, obviously. Before we reveal what exactly it was, let's take you through it first person. So you guys ready for a little first person reading time? Mm. I want you to put yourself in this character's shoes. There's no name. You give them a name whatever you want because a lot of the victims were nameless. But here we go. So here you are. You've just arrived at the Ostrich Inn in your gold-plated, NOS-activated carriage. That one's for you, Lewis. That one's for you. I like it. Thank you. Thank you. You've got a bard of some kind permanently strapped to the front and back of your ye olde version of a carriage, playing the Fast and Furious Tokyo Drift theme <laughs> on a lute. Right, so there's one on the front, one on the back. Yeah, it's two. It's like speakers, mate. You got <laughs> two <synchronous>. people. <laughs> Could you give us a little uh, Fast and Furious Tokyo Drift music, Lewis, just so people got the idea of what was being played? Ding, 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 Dead fast, loud uh, bards playing at the same time. You're making it quite obvious that you're a rich person, a Richie McRichardson, so to speak. But that's okay because you're safe. You're on the royal trail. Nothing possibly bad could happen to you. So you arrive at the inn, and as you enter, you feel this is the kind of place you can get down with. And soon enough, the landlords notice you and dart over towards you. The small, portly woman shuffles towards you with an almost unnerving smile stretched across her face. She says, Hello, my dear. Travel far, have we? Is it room and board you're looking for? Well, we have a f- board. we have a freshly renovated room, perfect for weary travellers like yourself. You'll never want to leave. <laughs> nah, I hate that. Didn't yeah. like it. Sorry, you don't like the uh, the Pennywise kind of laugh, do you? She laughed like that, did she? Sorry. <laughs> yes. Okay. You'll never want to leave. <laughs> I'd leave. I'd leave. <laughs> okay, okay. You'll never want to leave. <laughs> That's fine. They'd still be weird while I'd stay. <laughs> <laughs> I prefer the tee hee. <laughs> You'll never leave. <laughs> there you go. Mm. <laughs> I don't prefer it. <laughs> <laughs> I <don't prefer> it. <laughs> okay. In this situation, you probably would have responded to her questions, but for the sake of pacing, you agreed to all the questions she said and were ready for a lovely night at the Ostrich Inn. Before heading to your room, you catch the male landlord peering at you from the corner of his eye whilst polishing some kind of tankard. Before questioning his strange gaze, he perks up into a customer-facing mode. He goes on to say, Hello, sir. All's well, I hope. Could I fix you anything in terms of beverages or sustenance? Would you like a fat pig, sir? Plumpest we've had all year. I don't know what that guy's deal is, but yeah. As you nod salivating at the thought of a tasty pork dinner. You quickly hear Mrs. Jarman say, Put it in the sty! And with that, she leaves you... Is there a vegan menu? (laughs) There's grass out back! (laughs) We've got tofu in the back. (laughs) We've got tofu in the back if you really want me to open it. So yeah, so Mr. Jarman asks you if you want a fat pig 
And then Mrs. Jarman says, put it in the sty. And before long, she leads you up to your room. What's a sty? The pig sty. Oh, put it in the sty. Okay. Like the room you're in. Uh, oh, hey. Very nice. <laughs> hey, 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 hey. You've never even seen my room. Can say the pig was in the field and it's been put in the sty. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, sure. The pig was in a field, and then you know what? This is going to make sense. So I appreciate it if you don't try and rip apart this part. Sorry, you know I Sorry. appreciate the questions, but okay. Yes, Lewis. They took, Sorry. The, pig, they took the pig from a field <laughs> and took it into the sty for slaughtering. Okay, is it, can you handle that? Yes. Is that <laughs> good? Good. So it was late in the day already, and you could feel your eyes slowly easing shut with tiredness. But the room before you was fancy enough for you to quickly take in its majesty. A fancy four-post bed, some impressive curtains, and overall just absolutely quality interior design. Quality. You jump into the bed like a rich lad, like you are, hearing the creaking and clanking of the bolts and such. Before you know it, you are in complete silence, listening to the sounds of the inn, quiet footsteps outside. Mm. Outside the door, you can hear carriages moving in the distance. And then all turns to black. So you guys think next, strangulation or poisoning, yeah? Mm Mm-hmm. Okay. In this deep sleep, you find yourself suddenly gliding about until you realize you are actually awake. And you look up to see yourself sliding out of the bed into some kind of chute. The chute itself felt slick with some substance, and the temperature was rising rapidly. Just what the hell was going on? You're a rich man. (laughs) This ain't for you. What is this? Can you imagine just waking up and, like, you're halfway, like, down the bed just moving? Ooh, <laughs> like... Fucking hell, what's going on? <laughs> <laughs> <Are> you just... <laughs> <laughs> Is it one of them Wallace and Gromit beds? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Cracking bed, what? what? <laughs> Cracking bed, Gromit? Yeah. I wanted to say womit. <laughs> Cracking bed, womit. Yeah. And then what's waiting for you? you? Just as you slide, it's that penguin thing staring you from the end of the bed. <laughs> what the hell it is? I don't even really like Wallace and Gromit, but every Christmas day it's on. And I end up watching it. Bastards. <laughs> How dare they? So, yeah. Regrettably for you, the ride is almost over. And all of a sudden, you are submerged. Intense pain fires all over your body. And you feel a gloopy substance creeping its way into every orifice. Ooh. Every orifice. Say goopy. Goopy, yeah. Ooh, I don't like that word. <laughs> I don't like that. You don't like a lot of things, Adam. No, I'm a very particular man. <laughs> I don't like goop. I don't like high-pitched laughs. I don't like crying. <laughs> <laughs> that's, all, that's my Tinder profile. <laughs> <laughs> no crying, no goop. <laughs> don't be goopy. Don't cry. And No, no munters. <laughs> You said that, James. It's not me. <laughs> it's an in joke. You don't get it. Anyway, oh, sorry. The I, pain. Am I not in? I'm not a part of the fucking James and Lewis club, am I? <laughs> no. No, you're not. <laughs> Maybe when you've done 50 episodes, mate. All right. <laughs> the pain builds and builds. You scream and flail however you can, looking for a way out of this inferno. As you scream, more liquid falls into your mouth and your insides start to burn. Burning, burning. And burning some more. Adam's doing an amazing flailing impression. Though. It's really getting me into the moment. Your skin blisters and bursts. And your screams are cut short. And you are no more. Oh. Before you know it, your body is being carried out to the back door of the ostrich. Stripped of its clothing. And thrown into the cooling waters of the brook just behind the inn. So then, gentlemen. This is what the Germans did to their rich patrons. But can you accurately tell me what you think happened? I just just described it, but yeah, give give me your best shot. I reckon, did they boil them alive or something? Sounds like they deep fried them. Yeah, something like that. (laughs) Yeah. Basically, yeah. Deep fried royals. Deep Deep fried royals. Deep fried rich people, at least. Yeah. So that's that's what happened. They boiled people alive. Ooh. It's grim. So, let's go into what actually happened. So the Germans were greedy, but also... Kind of smart, targeting only the richest of travellers, high risk and high reward targets. They'd figure out who was perfect for monetary harvesting, and when Mr. Jarman asked if they wanted a fat pig, this was the call sign for murder. Uh. If, if this customer was acceptable to Mrs. Jarman, she would respond with 
put it in the sty. Put it in the sty. <laughs> like from out on the field and then they put it in the sty. Exactly like that, Lewis. Exactly. <clears throat> the customers come from the field and then they're being put in the sty. <laughs> yes, which is a boiling pot of oil. <laughs> Delicious. Adam, have you got your nails painted? Why? Yeah, well, you've got no a problem. Se- huh? <laughs> no, I think huh? you had a serious calcium deficiency or something. No, they're white. Apparently that means you're taken. <laughs> Does it really? That's what someone told me yesterday, apparently. Is that why you've been <laughs> so <laughs> unhappy? <laughs> oh, let me get I'm my tiny still. violin. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, is that why? Is that, is that why? Is that why I have right? painted nails, James? Hmm? I didn't say it's a problem. I just, I just merely pointed out that I noticed you have painted. Just nails. because I don't cry does not mean I'm not in touch with my feminine side. <laughs> not everything has to be an outrageous <laughs> point. Fucking okay. <wanker>. Oh, <laughs> I do. <laughs> I do philosophy. Therefore, everyone offends me. You know what? You ain't special. I've got twenty Adam Dallies lined up around the corner. I mate. am special. <laughs> <laughs> I am James Bond. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> but yes, Adam. No, I liked it. I was just merely pointing out that I like wonderful, your painted nails. Wonderful. I'm I glad get... you like it. I did it for your approval only, obviously. <laughs> Everybody wants Daddy James's approval. <laughs> so the room, the blue room, was renovated to look as lovely as it was described, but a few key details are made to the very structure of the room. The main one being a contraption, hinging the bedstead, causing the bed to drop to a 45-degree angle and slide out everything on it to which it took a short trip down a chute to ultimately end up in a massive vat of boiling oil, grease, or water. The, inter- the interpretations vary. That is a big pot. That is, yeah. yeah, that's how do they, how do they like, you got to have some kind of like coffin-sized boiling pot or something. <laughs> coffin-sized, yeah. Because you ain't going to fit someone in like a witch's cauldron. Some, yeah. <laughs> yeah, big one, mate, yeah. And you've also got to drag them from the bed. How did they drag them without like waking them up? They they don't like... drag... What do you mean drag them out the bed? The... I thought you said they dragged them out the bed. No, the oh, bed. they went through a chute. The bed drops. Oh. To a 45. I've just explained this. All right. Oh, just... you're listening. <laughs> exactly. For once, I was, Adam. I was thinking that they were like just being dragged out of bed. Like... <laughs> <laughs> well, that fat food was delicious. I can't oh, wake up. Yeah. No, no. The bed dropped to a 45 degree angle and they slid out into this chute. How did they have this technology? I'm sorry, but... It's only hinges and bolts, mate. It's not that. that I, I can't. Can I figure? Out, can you figure out hinges and bolts? <laughs> <laughs> Cracking shoot! <laughs> uh, so yeah, the bed contraption was triggered by a s- turning a small lever. But you may be wondering, how did the Germans know when to drop the fat pig into its sty, so to speak? Well, a peephole, of course, or just a keyhole in this case. They literally just looked through the keyhole to see if they're asleep. Through the That's keyhole. They do. Yeah, through the through the keyhole, mate. <laughs> or as you'd say, up the beanstalk. The keyhole looked up the beanstalk. <laughs> the keyhole looked directly into the bed to see if they were sound asleep. But I was thinking at first if it's one of those uh you know those creepy castle paintings they have with the eyes. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's just like, oh, I swear that painting's eyes are following me. I just, oh my god, I, James! I had a uh, I don't know why this just popped into my head. I had a very no, okay. strange experience last night. Let's hear it. I was uh, out walking with my friend Devon, big up Devon, and um, Devon. <laughs> don't know who you are, but hey, I'm a friend of <clears> Adam, we like, so you're a friend uh, of mine. We were just sitting on a wall, and we looked to like the side of us, mm-hmm. and there was just this house, and there was a silhouette, <laughs> like literally as if someone was in front of the curtain, but you couldn't see the face, just really? staring at us. Ooh, and I couldn't see the face, so I like waved at them. <laughs> no, absolutely nothing. <laughs> at, Hello. This was, this was at like I don't know half one in the morning. <clears throat> so I waved at them, nothing happened. I waved both. I was literally like, I need them to acknowledge me because I'm freaking out at the moment. Like, it was the like, it was the freakiest thing I've ever been through. And then like, I kind of like, I think they moved a little, and I ran away after that. Really? And then I went back like 30 seconds later, and they were gone. I think. Imagine if like the opposite thing, like that person was watching from the curtain, and they were like, "There's some crazy man <laughs> staring at the right. fire. Oh, he's oh. waving his arms. Oh, hey, yeah. hey, 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 hey. <laughs> Yeah, just that. Just taking place. But yeah, it's funny you should say that, though. That is, that is really, really creepy. What do you think it was, if you, honestly, from your point of view? I reckon it was a ghost. Really? It was unnatural human behaviour. What, moving slightly or standing at a window? Just standing and staring window. at me. And I couldn't see your face, and it was completely... Because the light was on in the background. 
Yeah. But I could, you just couldn't see anything. It was just dead, pure, pure dead still. They weren't swaying. Yeah, or dead anything. still. How long was this going on for? At least like a good 45 seconds of me just like oh. trying to. <laughs> oh, a good 45 Fucking minutes. Fucking wave at me! Yeah. Just being Look like at me! Yeah. Anyway, apologies for the segue, everyone. Um, no, don't, no, don't apologize. That's, that's I, I have to. I that have to is apologize. on brand. That's oh, fantastic. Okay, okay, it's on top. That's it's great. Yeah, it is. I had a speaking that's, experience, James. That's good. I'm. You proud I'm of me? Glad. Yes. <laughs> Daddy's that's proud good. of you. <laughs> Daddy James is very proud of his sons. Yeah. Um, no so what did what, pencil what, sharpening? What did your What did your friend uh, say about it? Devon. 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 Um, Stop sharpening pen. So what is fine. wrong with you? You've <laughs> every episode, Italian sharpening pencils, multivitamins, oh, <laughs> so something else. Oh, spraying the room with air freshener. <laughs> yeah, Lewis has got his bolts and his cable ties. Yeah, but he's still actively taking place. I am also convers- actively taking. I thought okay. that the viewers might enjoy some pencil you know sharpenings. I'm just being. You know what? You were the firstborn, therefore. You know, I put the most pressure on you. And that's not right. technically wrong. Lewis was the first born, but yes, yeah. I am the you youngest know. in the group. Yeah. Lewis is a home owner, though, so he's successful. He is successful. <laughs> <laughs> Even Daddy doesn't own a house. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so they dropped the fat pig into its thigh, so to speak, and they had these peepholes, the haunted castle kind of painting. You know what I'd do? I'd deliberately cross my eyes when looking through it. So people think they have some sort of goofy... You don't know painting. where I'm looking. <laughs> <laughs> where am I looking, mate? Hey, hey. So also, my first thing about this story is, if like they were falling for a shoot, mm. and you're a bit of a screamer, how come yeah. nobody in, no one in the other rooms heard... Blue? <laughs> 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 I didn't like that. Blue? <laughs> <laughs> I can't imagine the drops that long. Yeah, no. to be fair, it's not the ostrich isn't that big. You'd be like, I'm, I'm, I'm like, no! there's not going to be like no! soundproofing there, is there? So no. you're going to hear the fucking mechanics of the hinges and everything go up, and this fucking it, 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 massive like kabunk, motherfucker just goes down. <laughs> kind of sus. I don't know. We need to oil those hinges again. <laughs> and then just the yeah. fucking screams of the man being boiled alive. <laughs> But anyway, yeah. So you got the, you can hear the screams, the cranking of the uh, the, the contraption and stuff, and um, obviously people being bored alive. So unless you've got some tip top seventeenth century soundproofing, I feel like more people would have heard it. Maybe just screaming was a big part of how things Maybe worked. Maybe they only then. have one person in at a time. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe the room rates are so competitive that the guests <laughs> yeah. don't mind the screaming. You know what? I'm paying one shilling for a night here. I can handle a bit of screaming. <laughs> ah! Ow! Ow! Speaking of being bored alive, Richard Roos, a man accused of poisoning a family in 1531, his form of execution was being bored alive for his crimes for a period of two hours. Appar- Fucking apparently, hell. in this two hours, he was lowered in and out of the boiling pot three times until he was dead. And apparently, he roared loudly as he went in. Roar. <laughs> yeah, that's good. He went, Roar! Roar. Oil hot. <laughs> Oil burny. Mm. But either way, though, boiling someone alive is not a quiet... And also, if he's a big vat, how do you heat up a vat that quickly back, back in the day? You think you have it on from the morning? Mm. Yeah, I have it on all the time. Yeah. yeah. I just, someone... just put yeah. the gas on six. Yeah, it's going to be a big gas That's going to be a <laughs> massive gas bill. Do they have gas back then? I don't think no. they had gas back in the 17th century. <laughs> <laughs> <No>. <laughs> Yeah, but I guess you just have like a big fire. That's a lot of loud. You need like a big <laughs> ventilation. Imagine if a guy went, oh, bloop, and it's just like absolutely freezing in there. Oh. Also, what did they do with the oil after they burnt people alive? Because obviously, probably I mean, to people in it. Well, you... or, 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 or reused it. I mean, why reused, would you? Yeah, yeah. reused. You know, you're killing these people, oh. mate. What would you give a damn about the hygiene yeah, of the know. oil? I'm just saying, I, I, I wouldn't use that oil on a. I'd use fresh oil. Okay, nah. that'd be a co- was... that'd be a cost. So wasteful. Yeah, <laughs> too good to go, mate. Too good to go. Well, sorry, I'm a man of high tastes. You're a man of wasteful tastes. High five, anyone? High five. Yeah, high five, someone. <laughs> <laughs> oh my <laughs> god. <laughs> <laughs> so either way, though, this is how the Germans did their dirty business, claiming all of their goods as their own and selling their horses and even their carriages to some local gypsies. So imagine the drivers of these carriages coming out and being like, well, 
Where's it gone? Yeah. What? In the bards. Yeah, the bards. Oh, that was <laughs> that. Pious. The bards was an embellishment for the tale. I just want to put what? that on that. Yeah, oh, sorry, okay. mate. Yeah. They weren't. J- did, uh, did typical they... James fashion, Lewis, they weren't real. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying not to be hurt. Yeah, I'm in quite an emotional state. <laughs> you know. Oh, why don't you go cry to Benedict? <laughs> <laughs> You just, uh, you just don't understand how I feel. <laughs> you don't know who I am. You don't know who I am. But yeah, um, so these drivers were basically told by the Jarmans that their passengers had left early in the day, leaving them no longer requiring their services. Mm. A d- typical rich people. Oh, Fucking bourgeois. <laughs> <laughs> eventually, like most stories about murderers, they eventually got caught. The Jarmans' days were numbered. See, the issue with killing off so many fairly rich people is that they are connected. They are fa- <laughs> not like poor people. They are friends, families, <laughs> lovers, and people who actively look out for where they <laughs> are. Poor Unlike people. poor people who have none of that. Poor people don't have families, friends, or lovers. There's only rich people. You got who no do. friends, mate. You poor or something. <laughs> <laughs> Just go buy some. But you know, mate. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So poor, when it mate. came time to kill a well-known. Clothia, or Clothia, called Thomas Cole, they didn't know what was going to happen next. Being from Reading, Cole arrived at the inn in the usual style and was soon enough offered a fat pig and brought to the boil, so to speak, <laughs> and plopped out the back in the brook once more. Imagine, like, if you were really hungry and you got to this inn and you were thinking, fuck, yeah, that pig sounds nice, yeah. and he just ended up dying. <laughs> <laughs> I'd be quite disappointed in that. I think I'd survive through the sheer hanger. The hanger would yeah. keep me alive. I'd come out the pot boiling, blistering, going, Give me that pig now! <laughs> Where's my pig? <laughs> That's well, what I'm doing. Obviously, your like, lips would have boiled over, so it's like, Where's that pig? Where's my dinner? I won't, be think- I won't be going to sleep until I'd had that. Uh- yeah. I'd have it for breakfast, mate. <laughs> full, pig Sorry. For, full pig for breakfast. It's gonna be another ten. Minutes. <laughs> Would you like some rest in your bed? Why don't you have a nap while you wait? Have a nap. <laughs> we'll call you down. Come on, come on. That's a nice watch you've got there. I can't hear you again. No, yeah, oh, that's a there nice you watch you've got there. <laughs> they didn't have oh. watches back then. Oh, rather that's, expensive as I That's a nice wrist sundial you've got there. Is that a bear? <laughs> yeah. Good, good. Good dumb lad. Uh, so, whatever gang of gypsies or whoever they actually sold Cole's horse to, they did a really, really bad job Where of getting... Where did the gypsies get the money from? I'm not, I don't think gypsies Why are the gypsies particularly... get... Oh, is that what you're saying hmm? gypsies are hmm? poor? You're saying gypsies are well, I, I'm pretty sure if they're travellers... Well, let me guess. Money? Let me guess they've got no friends as well. They've, got, mean, they've got no lovers. I didn't say that. No one cares about them. But from your uh, reasoning, if uh, if you're poor, you have no friends, huh? I've turned this around <laughs> expertly. <laughs> uh, as a obviously rich guy who, you know, really... Has many a friend in his... Has many a friend <laughs> in his life. Phone book. Yeah, I feel that you are being unjust towards my... I'm just saying, my, where are the gypsies... Wh- where's their income coming from, huh? Maybe they're, you know... Huh? Go on. Uh. Maybe they're doing tricks on the street. I don't know. <laughs> How do maybe you... Maybe they're doing <laughs> tricks on the street. <laughs> maybe they're doing tricks on the street. <laughs> all right, all right. Unlocked, unlocked that... prepubescent genes. Inherited. I can't afford a horse. How the fuck are gypsies affording it? I'm not saying I'm a, a rich boy. Well, they're probably selling the horses off cheap because they want to get rid of them. Mm, all right. I know they're greedy, sense. but they're still trying to run a big murder right. enterprise. Come on. That makes sense. Yeah. Quick buck. Quick buck, Didn't so to speak. People think, <laughs> why aren't this brook running very well? <laughs> and what's all this, like, <laughs> it smells a bit back here. <laughs> <laughs> Don't think about that. One shilling per night. Uh, <laughs> get in here. <laughs> the smell will disappear soon enough. Well, speaking of that, Lewis, so obviously this coal disappearing, a grand search began. And the Jarmans didn't stop to think where the brook would actually lead to. Because soon enough, someone followed it to a lake where Cole's body was found floating about inside of it. Do you think finding bodies in lakes and rivers was like a common occurrence back then? They were just like, oh, look. Oh, there's another, another one, one of those lake bodies. 
Oh, there's another one. Oh, two today. I see two today. You don't have Brook yeah, did I? You know, do you think, yeah. it, do you think it's like that? I sure two Brook bodies today. I sure added. two Brook bodies today. He's really cool, actually. I have been laughing a lot. Ha <laughs> ha. You think it was like that? Yeah, pretty much. Cool, <laughs> cool, 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 cool. So yeah, Lewis, like you said, the brook, you know, maybe it was a high, a high flow brook, and the body yes. sure got sucked off down yeah. it real yeah. quick. Do they all, do they all <laughs> float to the same place? I'm guessing we all it. float down here. <laughs> if you lived here, you'd be home by now. Come join the clown it. <laughs> 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 it's only just a laugh, isn't it? And he screams in. <laughs> Your flow too! Your flow too! Your That's flow one. too! That's when George is decaying. <laughs> <laughs> Stop clapping me! Stop clapping me! <laughs> For a process of elimination, the Germans became suspects numero uno and numero dos. And their money making. <laughs> sk- Stop putting reactions on Skype! <laughs> God's sake, <laughs> I've got thumbs up, I've got cowboys, I've got <laughs> just, oh, I've got goblets of beer clinking together and laughing face. Listen, if you're that bored, I'll just read to myself, okay? There's penguins now! Oh. <laughs> Don't sarcastically on, clap me, on. Lewis. Carry Don't on. sarcastically <laughs> clap. Remember, there's other people listening to this, you know? Lewis started it. Nobody has time it. for your hijinks. He started with the cowboy. And the cowboy. <laughs> Howdy, <pie. Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay, so Germans were suspect number one. Yeah, suspects numero uno and numero dos, because there's two of them. And their money-making scheme was brought to an end. Mr. Jarman actually did a runner when he felt like he was about to be caught and made it as far as Windsor Forest, ten miles away, before being apprehended. It's not actually known what happened to Mrs. Jarman, or at least how she was caught, but like many missing details of the story, it will actually become clear later why. Jarman was actually charged with 15 murders, but he himself told the jailers it was closer to 60 people. He grasped himself in. See, imagine imagine the oil. Mm. You will recycle that much oil after 60 deaths. I, I, I'm not sorry, but I wouldn't, I wouldn't like... Fry an egg in that. That's that's <laughs> that's a tasty soup you got there. Mm. Put some coriander in it, mate. I'll be good to go. It's a bit lardy. <laughs> it's a bit lardy, man. Either way, Mr. and Mrs. Jarman were both hanged, and that was the end of it. It's said that the village of Colnbrook was actually named for this particular event, with Thomas Cole, the last victim they murdered, Cole in the brook, and eventually over time becoming Colnbrook. This has never been truly confirmed, but that is, it's, a, it's a play on words that may be true. May be true, guys. Coal in the brook. Oh, co- coal, coal in, in the, the brook. brook. Look at that water. There's a coal <laughs> in the brook. Yeah. No, you need to do it, you need to do it in the, uh, the, the creepy little girl voice. Coal in the brook. Coal in the brook. Coal in the brook. There's a coal in the brook. I got you, boy. So now, like most places with a bit of grim history, comes the tale of various hauntings, ghosts in the night, spirits in the shadows, what have you. Strange noises, ghostly figures, and poltergeist activity are all said to be part of a day's work at the Ostrich Inn. The former landlord, Mark Bourne, said it was all true, going on to say that a woman in a Victorian dress and a ghostly young girl are just two of the many spirits said to haunt the inn. Next to these apparitions, you also have the staff reporting equipment going off and on, cold spots, and overall feelings of despair. <laughs> That's just cool working in the pub, bub. <laughs> You'll get over it. <laughs> Just called that nine to five, mate. Most my, my sisters work at a pub, and it's more like three till one a.m. Life. <laughs> well, <laughs> I don't know a song about three till one. Working three till one, you don't have a life at all. Everyone's waving their arms. You can't see it, but it makes me talking on my own a lot more interesting. Lewis looks so relaxed right now. <laughs> can't have wide that mouth open. Jesus, that was a gape. <laughs> 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 it's said the majority of the supernatural encounters took place where the murders took place, the upstairs of the inn, 
the blue room, but technically it happened underneath the inn, in the big vat of fat. So, to bolster my research on this episode, into this haunting and harrowing tale, I watched, and you, you gents watched parts of, an episode of Most Haunted, where they did their own investigation at the Ostrich Inn, and here's what we learned. So, what did you gents think of that uh, clip of Most Haunted I sent you? I don't think I've ever seen an episode before, so it's quite interesting. Because there's the medium, isn't there? What's his name? Derek Akora. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> now, one of the. And, uh, <laughs> without him, it would be quite. <laughs> it wouldn't be that interesting of a program, would it? So, in this room, someone died. Oh! Yeah, everyone watches it for Derek Akora's absolute <laughs> madness. It's slightly colder in this corner than it is that corner. That's a ghost. Jesus Christ. Yeah. <laughs> the thing is, like, I didn't, obviously, I don't think you, you both didn't watch the whole thing, did you? You just watched the, did you watch the whole thing, either of you, or just the, the 20 minute bits I told you to watch? Okay. So at the start of it, while the host of Vet Fielding was walking about dressed as if she was from the Matrix for some reason, uh, Derek Okora apparently had been told nothing about where he was going. He was being driven about the Berkshire countryside randomly until the team wanted him on set. Disgusting. But the, what, what I found even funnier, it was the middle. Where are you of, fucking taking me? Why didn't they just leave him in one I know, place? Exactly. Yeah. In case he got, <laughs> in case he got bored and started doing some research into where he was going. But the thing is, when they were filming him, it was the middle of the day. But they put him on, put him on night vision. They put him, Derek Cora, on night vision in the day. Absolutely terrible treatment. Terrible treatment of Derek. Poor Cora. guy. Yeah. Sam. Sam. I'm getting something. <laughs> They're taking I'm getting really him. fucking taking annoyed. <laughs> <laughs> Sam, I can feel my patience dropping. Sam, Run away. But yeah, uh, as it, as they went on, the landlord on there said that the paranormal activity got worse during roadworks outside the inn. <laughs> it's just vibrations from the jackhammers, mate. I'm afraid. And apparently, there's also a very high staff turnover there. And most employees last only a few months. Apparently one particular chef there heard soaring in the blue room and a clock was thrown at him. They need to e- increase the working conditions on just... their pay and then they might be able to retain yeah. staff. You just, you just see Derek Okora like ducking down as he's <laughs> Get him, Sam! Oh, Jesus, what was that? Need the time! Spooky. Spooky time. But yeah, they said I'm most haunted that the most haunted, hey, the most haunted room was the pantry, which is where the bodies were apparently stored before they were taken to the brook. But when they did like exterior shots of like Derek Akora showing up and stuff, they obviously put like fog machines on around the building because it was like it looked like The Exorcist when the The Exorcist shows up. That's what it looked like. Yeah, All this geez. mist everywhere. But the best bit was was Derek Akora. What do you think of Derek Akora's readings in that episode when he did his uh? His psychic tour through the ostrich. Gym. <clears throat> I thought they were very interesting, and um, for for most of the part that um, I briefly watched, um, they were good. <laughs> I don't think Adam watched it all. <laughs> I watched the first ten minutes. Thank you very much. I asked you to watch twenty well, minutes. That's right. That was, and that was ten minutes before this podcast started. <laughs> really? I've been busy. Oh, the disappointment is immeasurable. My day is ruined. Watched the allotted time. Thank you, Lewis. That's someone's willing to put. No. That's someone's willing to do some minor research towards the episode. Sorry, teacher, I didn't do my homework. <laughs> Daddy James is not happy with Adam today. <laughs> they had the guy with the um, thermometer. Didn't oh they? yeah, the parapsychologist. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, is that what it was? I think he's a parapsychologist. Yeah, he seems very calm. And what was, very what calm, was the guy man. with mm. the other machine that went bleep? No, oh, I don't know what that. I don't remember that. I don't, I, I don't remember. Bleep. Favorite bit was when a. Uh, he was getting choked by a, a spiritual garrotting. But luckily, Sam, the spirit guide, come to save the day. He was going, yeah, yeah, I watched that. Was going, <clears throat> that did you watch that bit? Did you? Did you? Did, did you really? I did, did yeah. Oh, did you? That's interesting. Cool. Good. Well, well done. Can't. And then, <laughs> then Derek Okora ran into the spirits of the Jarmans, who are evil. And then he even did better. Derek did his best trapped in a vat of boiling oil impression. Which was his way. He just, he just lay down on a metal table for a second and he was having his back rubbed. That was his uh, drowning in oil impression. But then then he called out the James Henry and Mrs. Jarman, and she said that she took all his money and put it under the hidden stairs. 
and later he did some more strange graspy sighs, and they went hunting after the spirit of Jarman, apparently looking for some form of book hidden in the conveniently wrecked attic, which contains all the records of the murders they did, but guess what, they didn't find it at all. Show yourself, Jarman! Yeah, exactly. They didn't find the book. Poor Carl, Carl on the team, he was basically crawling about the attic for about two hours looking for a book. And then he's seen an orb. An orb on the camera. And that was it, really. Oh, I thought it was something that was thrown at him. Oh, yeah, he said something was thrown at him, actually, didn't he? Yeah. He had the book, mate. It wouldn't bear if they, they you know, made it. Sure, it was a clock. <laughs> <laughs> Guess what time it is, bitch! Yeah. Paint time! Threw the book at him! <laughs> yeah. This is what we did. This is what we did. So, guys, are you now ready to hear the true revelation to the Austrian yep. story? Yeah. What do you want? To, what do you think it is? What do you think the, the true revelation is? The big time um, revelation. It was. It was. It was all uh, false. It wasn't real. Okay. Okay. You lose. Kill my Lewis. I have an opinion. <laughs> it was actually a different landlord. Oh. Okay. So, you are more than welcome to believe whatever telling of the story you want to, even after what I tell you now. So, in the novel Thomas of Reading by Thomas Deloney, published in 1632, but written in the late 1500s, one of the chapters details the murderous innkeepers, husband and wife, the Germans, and how they slaughtered Thomas Cole, in, <laughs> Thomas Cole in a pub called The Crane. And the novel concludes with the murderers being discovered, killed, and the king requesting that the crane be demolished. There's no contemporary sources which show the pub has ever been the site of any murders, nor any execution of a Mr. or Mrs. Jarman. Some have said that Thomas Deloney was actually a witness for when the body of Thomas Cole was discovered, but it turns out Thomas Deloney was not a 12th century witness. He was a 16th century writer. By 12th century, that's wrong, sorry, I meant a 16th century witness, just a 16th century writer. My apologies. That's 400 years. Exactly. <laughs> So this story was intended to praise the cloth trade and created a pseudo-martyr for its cause. Thomas of Reading may have existed in some capacity at the very least. It's statistically probable that someone called Thomas from Reading was active in the cloth trade during that period when the murders apparently took place. But Deloney's titular character is as good as fictional. In the chapter How Thomas of Reading Was Murdered at His Oast's House of Colnbrook, who had also murdered many before him, and how their wickednesses was at length revealed. That is a massive chapter um, chapter title. How Thomas of Reading was murdered at his host's house of Colnbrook, who had also murdered many before him, and how their wickednesses was at length revealed. That's a quality, quality chapter length. So this was all just a celebrate. It class. was all, this story of the Germans was actually it was a story. From this book so, that has somehow been <coughs> adapted into real life, despite there being no okay. evidence of it ever, ever happening, apart from coming. Just so into they this can book. sell some cloth. And in, yeah, and in this this particular chapter, <laughs> they discover oh, my cloth. This man boiled people alive. Yeah, yeah. They discover that Thomas Cole visited the inn, the sign of the crane. Although there is no clear evidence of this being the previous name of the ostrich inn, it is taken to read it that it was. So, in the book, Thomas Cole takes a room at the Crane Inn, unknowing that the owners, the Jarmans, are killers. Secretly, the husband Jarman has used his carpentry skills to build a trapdoor from a bedroom to the kitchens. One pull of the lever, and the sleeping inhabitant falls into a boiling cauldron, and is either boiled alive or drowned. And the opening paragraphs of this chapter describe how the Jarmans see Cole as a quote-unquote fat pig, and ready for the slaughter. Later in the story, when Cole suffers a nosebleed, and melancholy they take their chance and dispatch cole as planned the next day cole's wife asks a servant to find thomas and on discovering no one had seen him leave the village of colnbrook suspicion falls on the jarmans of the crane and eventually it's discovered that you know they'd apparently killed 60 people but were still in debt hence why they were killing people for their money so that's what happened in the book the argument is that there is no true relation of a real incident that took place the book is a novel not history. In so it's all made up. Yeah, basically. For fuck's sake. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I got you, baby. 
Hey, I'm, no, I'm not about to, you know, I'm t we, we will, okay, I promise you, we will, I'm writing one right now, that is true, okay? <laughs> okay? I promise you I'm writing one right now, but it's still being reported as the first documented case of British serial killers. Even though they weren't real. Exactly, <laughs> and they continues with ghost clubs all around the country, including Most Hunted. Most haunted, most hunted, most, most haunted. haunted. It's you, James. Yeah, ghost clubs around the country make several mistakes. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, make several mistakes in their details about the case, especially saying the murder of up to sixty travellers. But even that number is turning into merely many instead of actually sixty. And if the ostrich inn really is the crane, just remember that at the end of this book, the king had the building decimated, saying no man should ever build upon that cursed ground. So if it was real, the ostrich inn shouldn't even be shouldn't even be there anymore. But there it is. So what we have here is a story so good, so macabre, that it was ripe for the picking when it comes to supernatural investigations and true life tales. Which also means that entire episode of Most Haunted was bullshit. Ooh. And he's going, huh, Charmin! He killed me! He's killing me! He was killing you, ghost, because Jarman's not real. I reckon what happened was that he read this book and he went, hey, oh, this is hey, the oh. inn where that stuff <laughs> I read about before the show, but not in preparation for the show. <laughs> so it's all right, because I haven't cheated. I already knew. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> But I still had a nice little drive around the country all day. Yeah. <laughs> but the, the Berkshire countryside is lovely, isn't it? So, uh, more, personally, my morbid curiosity almost wants these events to have taken place just so I could be like, wow, that's wild! And also to get you two off my back as well. So, yeah, overall... <laughs> I really want them to be true. <laughs> wow, that's amazing. I'm going to go back to my own life. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, overall... The evidence tells me the entire story is fabricated around the novel. And I have to honour that because, you know, we're not about misinformation here on Marvel's Mysteries and Midlanders. Not all the time, anyway. But you can see why ghost hunters to this day continue to focus on the tale of the ostrogen and the Jarmans. It's, it's, it's very appealing. The scary thing is, though, overall, is that humans have done even worse things for greed that actually did happen. And Jarman. that, my friends... <laughs> Yes, that, my friends, is the Ostrich Inn Murders. Whoa. <laughs> yeah. How uh, do you feel about that tale? I liked it. You say that every week, I liked it. I liked it. I, liked I it. think, um, yeah, it was good. I think it, <laughs> yeah, it was, was good. It made it hard to believe the uh, whole... Um, the amount of engineering that would have had to go yeah. into that, <laughs> that does sound 400 gross. years ago. Continue. Although people are very, very crafty like that, Lewis. Yes, very smart. It seems like a waste of talent. Oh, oh Lewis can't <laughs> kill people instead of <laughs> murder. Is such used a that, waste. What they could have used that for was putting dirty plates on and <laughs> <laughs> tipping them into a boiling <coughs> pot. Well, they could have started like making uh, slides and amusement stuff for their yes, yeah. for their inn. Would have attracted a lot of kids, and then they could have killed. <laughs> Would it <laughs> make kill money? Kids? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah, we prefer this story if it was the ostrich in infant killers, not the ostrich infant <laughs> killers. <laughs> that works. Sorry, that was better than what I said. I, I don't like that. Stop being it better would have made than sense me. Because you could have fit them in a uh, in a nice little cauldron. And yeah, not many kids are rich, though, mate, back then. You know, not many kids run about with money. I'll figure that. I'll figure out. Okay, I'll figure yeah. out. Let's give us an update, yeah? Yeah, yeah. Overall, though, what, 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 are the, uh, what are the morals of the tale? What have you learned from the ostrogen killers? What have you learned from the Jarmans? Um, that they have a very funny name. Um, <laughs> I, I don't think any... If, if anyone can tell, I've been saying Jarman. <laughs> I, like I don't think anyone noticed, to be honest. No, good, 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 good. Um, and uh, the moral is, if you want to sell your horse, just ask the gypsies where they got the money from. Excuse me, mate, where'd you get your money from? It's alright, mate, where'd you, uh, you, you, where'd you get that from? <laughs> I don't think you, you acquired that legally. Can I see your last paycheck, please? <laughs> yes, of course. Let me just get out my little, my 17th century pouch. <laughs> Scribbled onto some parchment. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, uh, that was the Ostrogen Killers. You know what? I, I began because uh, Hannah researched it for for me as well, 
And like oh. when I first began researching, I thought it. You're getting your wife to do the dirty she work. She offered. She listen. Well, you ain't doing it, are you? <laughs> 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 so yeah, your thing is that Hannah would be great on here, but she she's just too. She's she's the most unshy shy person ever, and I, I have to keep her away because you're on here. I was, was going to say I wouldn't know how to how to be. How to be? I'd be you know enamoured. Uh, you know, transfixed, especially if she was on camera as well. Oh my goodness! <laughs> now, nah, just c- I cover up the camera in the session. <laughs> Remove your thumb. This has been a, an ongoing issue, listeners. Adam has been lusting after my wife for many a year. Maybe, <laughs> maybe since I've known him. I'm so happy you were getting married. <laughs> Hey, that selfie of you, me and her, you looked very pleased. So. Oh, yeah. I just cute. wish it was me! Is that what it was? <laughs> Why isn't it yeah. me? Yeah. <laughs> that was a horrible sound. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm very uh, flaming at the moment. So, gents, that is the Jarmans, and that is us on Marvel's Mysteries and Midlanders. Is there anything you'd like to say before we finish this episode? Jarman. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. You, Lewis? That's- no. Cool. <laughs> He's got nothing to <laughs> say to simple you. man. Nothing to say to anyone anymore. So, everybody, thank you so much for listening. I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, if you want to get into contact us via email, it's marvels.mysteries at gmail.com. Or if you want to go on Instagram, find us on there where we do almost daily posts of some kind of... Uh, some kind of image. Uh, some kind of bullshit. Some sort of <laughs> bullshit. I've uh, recently, actually, a new thing I've been doing now is uh, doing... Uh, like story reads, like two minute videos of me reading like a strange, mysterious story. So you can catch them on Thursdays. But anyway, if you want to get us on Instagram, it's at MM Midlanders or at MMM Idlanders. It's the same. Excuse me. It's the same. Same, it's the same tag, but it's, I don't know how your mind works, okay? Why are you listening to me, David? Is still. That's it, guys. That is it. Happy, We're done. happy episode day. It always is. Until. until Hang on. Hang on. Oh, yeah, hang on. Oh, there we go. <laughs> Lewis has just put a clapping emoji on the screen. Thank you. And balloons. Hey, happy new episode, D. Well done. You made it this far. So, until next week, we are Marvel's Mysteries and Midlanders. I'm James. He's Adam. Hello. He's Lewis Carter. Goodbye. Goodbye. Take care now. Bye bye then. See you later. Bye. Bye. <laughs>